Hey everybody, it's me, Ned, sitting in a slightly different position of my warehouse this evening. Uh, this is another wine that I'm really excited about for the holidays, for Christmas, um, or, or Hanukkah, or the solstice, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do to celebrate the fact that it's getting colder and darker right now. Uh, this is the Pentimento. This is a Montagne San Emilion made by Michelle Dapri. Um, she is a uh, young woman from... I believe the Northeast originally, she went to Boston University and studied organic chemistry. Um, and in the course of studying organic chemistry and bartending on the side, got interested in wine. Uh, did, I think, an internship at a winery out in Sonoma and then studied winemaking at UC Davis. Uh, so this is Montagne Saint Emilion. Um, she went, ended up going to Bordeaux, worked with. Um, Oh, I don't even remember his name now. Uh, a famous Bordeaux, like, um, kind of consultant winemaker, like somebody that a winery, a family winery can hire, you know, an outside professional to come in and, like, give them a hand, like, help them out, figuring out what they need to do to improve the quality of their wines, that kind of thing. Um, and then worked at, uh, for Pierre, is a friend, friends with, works with Pierre Bernot at um, Chateau Beau Sejour. Uh, pretty awesome winery over in the right bank. That's where Michelle uh, kind of like really found her place in wine. She's So she's an American woman who's now a professional winemaker making wine for herself, but also for other people, like helping other wineries make wine in Bordeaux, which is pretty crazy. Um, that's You have to be really, really good to pull that off. Let me pull this cork. This is Merlot and Cabernet Franc, 75-25 here. The vintage is 2014. Um, it's a long cork. That's a cork that's, that's made for aging. Um, so what's on here? This is this here. There's Pentimento and then the, na the underscript here. This is the chemical... Uh, structure, the chemical, I don't know what that is. That's the chemical like formula for um, calcareous clay, clay that's very rich in limestone, uh, which is the um, soil type here. Uh, was that? Yeah, okay. The soil type over here in um, the right bank in saint Emilion, Montagne saint Emilion, Pomerol, that stuff. But Mer uh, Michelle is kind of on this like crusade to make Bordeaux more fun, to make it more accessible, because it should be like good Bordeaux, and good Bordeaux doesn't have to be that expensive. Bordeaux is one of the largest wine producing regions in France in terms of volume. They make a lot of Bordeaux, and most of it isn't that expensive. The super like top end stuff, you know, is really expensive and sought after. But then there's tons of Bordeaux made by small producers, like you know, with great traditions going back generations, going back hundreds of years, that's not that expensive. Um, this is like, you know, under $30. It's a nice bottle of wine. It's a serious, nice bottle of wine, but it's, you know, somewhere around like $28, $30 retail. It's not that expensive. And Merlot and Cabernet Franc, when they're done right, are amazing. It's dark and juicy. And it's got a little bit of that, like, cigar box, tobacco kind of thing that Bordeaux does that I love. And it's not, like, smoke. It's not, if, you know, if tobacco turns you off, it's not that kind of a, a thing, that kind of an aroma. It's like walking into, like, an old humidor or something that like that, or opening, like, a um, cedar cigar box. A lot of, like, you know, black raspberry, cherry. A little tiny bit of, like, tomato leaf or something like that. Like a, like a fresh kind of, like, salad. It's got a, you know, a little bit of a black pepper aroma to it. Mmm. It's a big, like, this is... This is what is great about 
Bordeaux when it's done well. It's a big, I should, I should clarify that right bank Bordeaux. It's a, it's a big juicy mouthful of wine, but it's got great acidity and tannin. It's got good structure. It makes the wine way more enjoying to drink than if this was just big and fruity and juicy. You know, like this is a very, this is a complete, this is the complete package. This is really, really well put together. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't quite call it chewy. It tastes a little bit like gravelly or something like that, though. There's like dark black fruit, like, um, like currant. Yeah. It's a rich, ooh, those tannins that come in on the finish and like dry your palate out. They're not aggressive, but they like, they dry your palate out and they reinforce the wine. They, they underpin it. Um, I love this about Bordeaux. It's like big, ju like powerful, juicy, confident wine to anthropomorphize it. It's confident, but it's very like linear and, um, like the wine has a plan. The, the wine like knows what it's doing. It's like, okay, here, 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 now this, and like goes through its progression when you drink it. Um, it's somewhere between medium to full bodied. It's not like a really big full bodied wine because it's not really high alcohol and it doesn't have that much tannin. It's 14% alcohol. So it's, it's substantial. It's mouth filling, but it's not like really aggressive or grippy. It's not as big as, as a real like big Syrah or California cab or something like that. Um, this is great. And, you know, Michelle is, uh, as far as I know, the only, like, American woman winemaker working professionally in Bordeaux. Uh, you know, she's making wines like this. Like, the label isn't old school, you know, complicated, hard to read, off-putting. She's really making a big effort to make Bordeaux, like, a little bit more relevant and accessible. And this is a delicious wine. So this is something I'm excited about for for the holidays. You know, this is a wine that will stand up to, but at the same time, not be too um, overpowering for things like beef stews, roasts, you know, like a, like a real like roast beef, something like that. This is, this is a perfect weight and profile of wine. So uh, it's around like the Rosemont markets have it, Lincolnville General Store. I'll put up a blog post about it. Definitely check it out if you're looking for something kind of like that, a little like classic and traditional.